People are restricted from their homes, restricted right. from their livelihood. They called themselves the Convoy of Truth and Freedom. About 20 of them descended on this roadblock, demanding to be let into the wildfire evacuation zone, saying they wanted to deliver supplies. Their intention was to cross that evacuation line. In the middle of the standoff, the BC Wildfire Service posted on social media saying it planned to pull crews out of the area out of fear for their safety. I looked at it truly in horror and I said, oh, this is going to be bad. District so Representative Jay Simpson, who is in the evacuation zone, says he pleaded with BC Wildfire to stay. That is not me. That's not our community. It's not where we wanted to go. After speaking with police, BC Wildfire deleted its post. The choice was made uh, in, in an effort to not give something steam that didn't and doesn't deserve to have it. The incident, a flashpoint amid ongoing tensions in BC's Shuswap region, where 11,000 people are on evacuation order and the fire still burns out of control. Many have stayed to fight the fire themselves, claiming the area is over-policed and underserved by wildfire crews. Still, RCMP say the protesters weren't from the area. We don't know what their intentions may be, uh, and in addition, in addition to that, it's just clearly just not safe. Residents on both sides of the barricade are frustrated. Let the emergency crews do what they need to do to sit there and keep everybody safe. This is where I saw most of the action was right here. Sorrento resident Daniel right Shoemaker works in the fire zone. But if you're not from that community, stay yeah, out. Yeah. You have no right being over there. After days of telling people in the evacuation zone to leave, the province recently pledged to work with them. Many hope this latest mishap won't set that progress back. John Hernandez, CBC News, Sorrento. For more on that situation, our Justin McElroy joins us live now. Justin, we heard from John about the province pledging to work with people who have stayed in the evacuation zone. What's the latest on that? Uh, it was interesting, Anita. Today was the first day since Monday, actually, where Premier David Eby or any members of his cabinet did not speak about the fire in the shoe swap area, and that was deliberate. They're trying right now to talk to people on the ground to try and lower the temperature, to not say anything that might inflame tension so, or cause consternation so that they can try and find that cooperation that John spoke to, which includes both uh, having ways that volunteers can help with the wildfires uh, as well who live in the area, as well as some ownership over the blockades. Uh, those talks are still ongoing, nothing public yet from uh, either side at this point, but like you can see in some negotiations, silence sometimes a good sign. So does last night's incident look like a setback in terms of progress in building cooperation with the wildfire service and people living in the area? Uh, it doesn't look like that, particularly because uh, people are fairly confident that the 10 to 20 or so people that showed up were virtually all from outside the shoe swap region. But it shows just how tenuous this situation is right now and the stress over the deleted Facebook post uh, saying that they were getting out of the region and just how fragile this situation is. You know, we're going to be entering tomorrow, the second week of this region, being under an evacuation order, yet hundreds of people still in the area. There's a lot still to resolve. The fire is still quite close, and there's no timeline for removing that order. So there's a lot for them to figure out. Uh, last night's incident certainly showcased just how things could fall apart quickly, depending on the situation. Justin McElroy, live tonight. Thank you.